Hey there, I'm Olivia Henderson. The warm, comforting scent of freshly baked bread and cinnamon rolls has been the backdrop of my life for as long as I can remember. Our family bakery, Sweet Memories, has been my second home since I was tall enough to peek over the countertops. Olivia, darling, baking isn't just about following recipes. It's about feeling the dough, understanding how ingredients dance together, my grandmother used to say. Those words stayed with me, even after she passed. When my mom, Patricia, took over the bakery, she brought her sharp business sense with her. I'll give her that, but the soul of baking, that's always been my territory. One morning, with flower-covered hands, I pitched a new idea. Mom, I've got a concept for a spring-themed cupcake line. She barely looked up from her spreadsheets. That's nice, honey, but have you seen last month's numbers? We need to focus on what sells. Then there's my sister, Bella. While I was perfecting croissants, she was perfecting selfies. Liv, can you believe it? I hit 10k followers. Bella squealed, phone in hand as usual. That's great, Bells. Now can you help me with these orders? Uh, you know flour ruins my manicure, she said, disappearing in a flash. Despite all that, I poured my heart into sweet memories, early mornings, late nights, whatever it took. But times were tough. New bakeries were popping up all over with jimmicky flavors and flashy marketing. We need to step up our game. I overgird mom till dad one night. The old ways aren't cutting it. I pushed the thought aside and focused on what I could control. New recipes, higher quality, personal touches for our regulars. Still, the worry gnawed at me. Then last Friday, mom dropped the bomb. Family meeting tonight after closing, she announced. Her tone left no room for argument. As I wiped down the counters that evening, my mind raced. Was this about a new direction for the bakery? Maybe mom was finally ready to give me more responsibility. Little did I know, my whole world was about to crumble like an overbaked cookie. The family gathered in the bakery after hours. The air was thick with tension, mingling with the lingering scent of vanilla. Mom stood at the head of the table, her face unratable. I've made a decision about the future of sweet memories, she began. My heart raced. This was it, my moment. Finally, years of hard work were about to pay off. I'm retiring, Mom continued, and it's time to pass the bakery on to the next generation. I couldn't help but smile. This was my moment. Bella will be taking over as the new owner and manager. The world stopped. What? I blurted out. Bella squealed, clapping her hands. Oh my gosh, really? This is amazing. Mom nodded, smiling. Bella's Instagram following is exactly what we need to boost our marketing. Her presence will be perfect for promoting the bakery. It felt like a slap. But I've been working here my whole life. I know every recipe, every customer. Oh, Olivia, Mom sighed. Baking skills aren't enough anymore. We need to modernize. Bella was already rattling off ideas. We can do influencer collabs, TikTok challenges, maybe even a reality show. This is crazy. Bella doesn't know the first thing about running a bakery, I protested. Don't be dramatic, mom dismissed me. Bella can learn the business side. Her natural charisma is what we need right now. Natural charisma? I scoffed. You mean her ability to take selfies. Olivia, that's enough. Dad finally spoke up, but his eyes wouldn't meet mine. I turned to Bella. You can't seriously want this. You've never cared about the bakery. She shrugged, still grinning. It'll be fun. Plus, think of all the cute apron pics I can post. That was it. I'm the one who's kept this place running. I'm the one who actually cares. Olivia, please, Mom said, her voice cold. This decision is final. You need to accept it. I looked around, hoping someone would defend me, but Dad just stared at his hands and Bella was already on her phone, probably announcing her boss babe status. Fine, I spat. If that's how little you think of me, then I'm out. I grabbed my bag, my hand brushing the open account books. Something didn't add up in the numbers, but I was too angry to care. I slammed the door behind me, the little bell jingling like a taunt. As I walked home in the cold night air, my mind raced. How could they do this to me? Had my whole life meant nothing. Every early morning, every burned finger, every compliment from a customer, none of it mattered. And then the financial records came back to me, gnawing at my mind. Something was off. When I reached my apartment, I slammed the door and leaned against it, taking a deep breath. This wasn't over, not by a long shot. Mom and Bella might think they've won. 
but they have no idea what I'm capable of. Sweet Memories is about to get a taste of something far more bitter than sugar. The next morning, I woke up with a plan. If Mom and Bella thought they could push me out, they had another thing coming. I headed to the bakery early before anyone else arrived. Just grabbing some personal items, I told Carl, our elderly night baker, as I slipped into the office. Quickly, I copied financial records and customer data onto a flash drive. Something was fishy, and I was determined to get to the bottom of it. Over the next few days, I reached out to our longtime customers and suppliers. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, it's Olivia. I'm working on a special project. Could you tell me about your recent orders? Piece by piece, I built a network and uncovered a clearer picture. What I found made my blood boil. Mom and Bella had been cooking the books for years, skimming money off the top. No wonder we were struggling. They'd been too busy lining their own pockets to invest in the bakery. I needed a new plan. I couldn't let them destroy Grandma's legacy. That's when it hit me. A food truck. I emptied my savings and bought a beat-up old truck. It wasn't much, but it was mine. I named it Rolling in Dough. The first day was terrifying. I parked near the local college, my heart pounding. Fresh pastries, get your gourmet treats here. I called out. At first, nothing happened. Then, a curious student approached, took a bite of my signature cinnamon roll, and her eyes widened. Oh my God, this is amazing, she shouted. Hey, everyone, you've got to try this. Before I knew it, there was a line around the block. Word spread fast, and soon I had regular bulk orders for events, even a write-up in the local paper. Meanwhile, Sweet Memories was struggling. I kept tabs through my old contacts. Bella's influencer marketing wasn't pulling in customers like she'd hoped. Girl boss? More like girl mess. Judy, our longtime flower supplier, told me over coffee, your sister couldn't tell a croissant from a crescent roll. It was satisfying, but not enough. They needed to face real consequences for what they'd done. So I made an anonymous tip to the IRS, a suggestion that they might want to take a closer look at Sweet Memories books. A week later, my phone rang. It was Bella. Olivia, you've got to help me. She was panicking. The IRS is here. They're saying something about an audit. I took a deep breath. Oh, really? That sounds serious. It is. Mom's freaking out. She says we could lose everything. You know about this stuff, right? Can't you come and help us? The temptation to gloat was strong, but I kept my voice neutral. Sorry, Bella. I'm kind of in the middle of something with my new business, you know how it is. But, but, she sputtered. Hey, I'm sure it'll be fine. I said, unable to keep a hint of satisfaction from my voice. After all, you've got all that natural charisma, right? I'm sure you can charm the IRS. I hung up, feeling a mix of emotions. Part of me felt guilty, but a bigger part felt like justice was finally being served. As I turned back to my food truck, seeing a line of happy customers waiting, I couldn't help but smile. Mom and Bella thought they could push me aside. Well, they were about to learn a hard lesson about messing with the wrong baker. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. I kept my head down, focusing on rolling in dough, but news from sweet memories trickled in through the grapevine. You won't believe what's happening, Carl, the night baker, told me one morning as he bought coffee for my truck. The IRS found years of tax evasion. Your mom and sister are in deep trouble. I feigned surprise, but inside, I felt a mix of vindication and sadness. How bad is it? Carl shook his head. Bad. They're talking about heavy fines, maybe even jail time for your mom. Bella's been crying nonstop. A few days later, I saw the closed sign on Sweet Memories. It felt surreal. The place where I'd grown up, where I'd learned to bake, was shutting down because of greed and poor management. Meanwhile, rolling in dough was thriving. I'd saved enough to start looking for a small storefront. And when I found the perfect spot, I couldn't believe the irony. It was right across from Sweet Memories. As I was setting up shop, familiar faces started showing up. Olivia, we heard you were opening a place, Sarah, our old cashier said hesitantly. We were wondering if you might need any help. I looked at her and Mike, our delivery guy, standing there hopefully. It felt right. I could use some experienced hands. When can you start? Their faces lit up, and just like that, I had a team. Opening day was a success. The line stretched down the block, filled with curious newcomers and loyal customers from my food truck days. As I was closing up that evening, a familiar figure approached. It was Mom. Olivia, she said, her voice shaky. 
Can we talk? I hesitated but nodded, letting her in. I am so sorry, she began, tears welling in her eyes. I made a terrible mistake with the bakery, with you, with everything. I stayed silent, allowing her to continue. Your sister and I are in serious trouble. The fines, we might lose the house. Her voice cracked, and she looked down. I know I have no right to ask, but is there any way you could help us? For a moment, I was tempted. Despite everything, she was still my mother. But then I remembered all the years of being overlooked, undervalued, and finally cast aside. I'm sorry, Mom. But no, I said firmly. You made your choices. Now you have to live with them. But we're family, she pleaded. Family doesn't treat each other the way you treated me. I replied, my voice steady. I think you should go. As she turned to leave, her shoulders slumped in defeat. I felt a weight lift off my own. I was finally free, free of their expectations, their judgment, and their toxic influence. The next few months flew by. My little bakery, rising above, became a local sensation. We expanded our menu, hired more staff, and even launched a small catering service. One day, while I was experimenting with a new recipe, Bella walked in. She looked different, humble, tired. Hey, Liv, she said softly, her tone uncharacteristically gentle. Your place looks amazing. Thanks, I replied cautious. What brings you here? She fidgeted with her phone, the same one she used to be glued to. I, I wanted to apologize, she said, her voice wavering. You were right about everything. I never appreciated what you did for the bakery, how hard you worked. I nodded, acknowledging her words, but not quite ready to forgive. I'm glad you're doing well, she continued. You deserve it. I'm just, I hope someday we can be sisters again. As she left, I felt a mix of emotions. Part of me wanted to call her back, to try and mend things. But another part of me knew that sometimes the healthiest thing you can do is let go. Standing in my thriving bakery, surrounded by the warm scent of freshly baked bread and the chatter of happy customers, I realized something important. Success isn't just about profit margins or social media followers. It's about staying true to yourself, working hard for what you believed in, and knowing your worth. Mom and Bella had chosen their path, prioritizing quick gains and shallow fame over genuine passion and integrity. Now, they were facing the consequences of those choices. As for me, I was rising above it all, one perfectly baked loaf at a time. And let me tell you, success tastes pretty sweet. The story has come to an end, but now I have a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have helped your mother and sister after discovering their betrayal and fraud, or would you have let them face the consequences of their actions alone? It's a tough moral dilemma. On one hand, their family. On the other, they caused serious harm and showed little regard for my feelings or hard work. What would you do in this situation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear your perspective. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe.